Good evening, everybody. Welcome back, Spartan Nation. We now bring in the legendary coach Chuck Grenier, legendary state of Michigan high school football and basketball coach, and a legend in the Spartan Nation. But now that he's retired, living up north, let me just tell you, as feared as he was by opponents coaching high school basketball and football, when coaches got on the court and saw him, many times they just were wanting to forfeit rather than put their kids through the misery. <laughs> Now the elk, the deer, the moose, the fish, all just simply they, – they simply say to him, okay, you can have one of us make your pick for the sake of the herd. But now he's even more known as the Sturgeon Assassin. That's right, the Sturgeon Assassin. <laughs> Coach, how are you, friend? Uh, wonderful. <laughs> hey, That's quite an intro. Every single week, man, I am like Viagra for the soul, aren't I? Yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> All right, Coach. I want to get into Michigan State recruiting. They came into the month of April. By the way, Coach joins us each and every week for the good, the bad, and the ugly. They came into the month of April with no commitments. They came out with 10, which I thought was amazing. Just a great, great week mm -hmm. from them. I, the offensive lineman, Kevin Wigington out of New Jersey, was a big get. The tight end, Cameron Allen out of Florida. Chuck Brantley. Uh, all of them. Just three big names. Now, last week, the Spartans handed out 40 offers in 15 st in 15 states. Okay, now think about that. 40 offers in 15 states, but were very active in the state of Georgia where they offered 14 players alone and offered five players from Florida and four from Virginia. So they are really out there. Over half their offers came to Florida, Virginia, and Georgia. Now, I want you to think about this. In the 2022 class, they gave out 30 of those offers. In the 2022 class. These are kids who are who are uh, going to be next year's juniors. Think about yeah. that one, Coach. Then they offered uh, – uh, let me see. Okay, 30 offers to the 2022 class. Six players in the 21 class, which are next year's seniors, only six, and four for the 2023 class, which are fresh, I mean, going to be sophomores next year. Your thoughts on Mel Tucker just continues to kill it in recruiting. It's it's all about getting your name out there, getting your brand out there, and, and getting your name circulated among the recruits because the football players that are out there, uh, the young kids, go to camps, they talk about who they're talking with, who they like, who they don't like, that kind of thing. And get your name out there just can't hurt. And it, and you see this with other high-profile programs. Uh, and there's one right down the road from Michigan State that, uh, that has its name out there, its brand is out there. And people have heard about how what a great program they are. And uh, that's what uh, Mel Tucker is trying to establish at Michigan State, getting the name, getting the brand out there getting kids talking about the program, looking at the program in the future. And all you've got to do now is put it together on the field, and you, you, it's going to be so much easier recruiting. And just to put so many offers out there, and you just never know. Uh, there might be somebody out there that has been following Michigan State that uh, uh, hasn't been contacted yet. So they, he's just trying to cover all the bases, get as much of Michigan State Spartan football out there in the United States as he possibly can, and, and it's uh, starting to pay off, it looks like to me. Coach, how impressed are you with Mel Tucker? Obviously, there's been nothing on the field, but the way he is engaging the alumni on Facebook chats, the way he has revamped social media to make Michigan State relevant, the way they're recruiting, the staff, everything. I, I said this last night. Everything he could do since he arrived, has been a total A. Your thoughts? You know, I think, I think you're spot on with that, too. Um, you know, the alumni, the backers, the money, that fund the program, that fund the university, keep everybody happy there. Uh, just keep putting your name out there. Do things class A. You know, Coach D'Antonio did a great job at Michigan State, but he kind of, kind of kept it as a regional Midwestern type of program, and Mel Tucker has taken that, which we've got a name, we've got a brand, Ohio, uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, was in the region that we're in right here, um, the Midwest, 
And now he's taking that and he's starting to spread that out. Now I know Coach got players out of Georgia. He was he was big in Georgia, but now we're looking at Louisiana, Texas, California, all these other places, and he's just trying to expand. He's trying to make contact with everybody because it's the whole thing. You, you, everybody's got to be pulling the rope to have the program successful, and, and he's doing a great job doing that. Totally agree. We're talking to the one and the only, the great coach, Chuck Gurnier. Coach, I want to ask you, going into whenever things come back, um, I was talking with an athletic director recently, not Bill Beekman, but another athletic director who said to me, even if COVID costs them some non-league games, he said, as long as conference games return, so those they have that Big Ten money. He thinks everything will be fine for one year. He thinks, I, he said to me, I think financially it's viable as long as we get all of our nine conference games. Your thoughts on that? I know you can't speak to the financial viability of schools, but you can speak. Does that surprise you? Because the week before I had given you some pretty grave concerns from another athletic director. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, to use these catchphrases, you know, that we just keep getting pounded with all the time. Uh, it's a new normal. It's a different type of thing. So if you can, if you can, if, if, if they can get it together enough where the players are safe, they can play at least conference games. Uh, and it, it it's going to be, you know, it's going to be like it started out in the 1930s. Right? You know, it's kind of the way I see it, uh, you know, there were teams that were getting national championships uh, by playing five games a year, <laughs> and uh, some, you know some of those games are high school teams that they played, and uh, it's just going to be you know baby steps at first unless this vaccine comes out. It's going to be baby steps at first, uh, and then eventually it's it's going to be back to a somewhat normal that we had before. But uh, it'll be baby steps while everybody is still in the in in the panic zone, and Coach, so uh, it, Co- it'll 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 come around. It's just going to be a little slow. Coach, when was your first Michigan State game that you personally attended? Oh, that had been uh, as a uh, Cub Scout in probably around 1958 or 59, somewhere around there. Uh, our our den uh, went to a. Michigan State and I think Purdue. I can't remember for sure if it was Purdue, but we went to that game and uh, I was pretty much hooked at that point. All right, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't want it. This is not a political question, and I'm not asking for your personal what you and your wife Becky would do. But if all if everything is cleared for people to come back in the fall without a vaccine, do you think? A lot of people, I mean, do you think they'll pack the stadium? Do you think 40%, 50%? What would be your guess on the amount of people that would come back without a vaccine? Well, I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people out there that believe in the herd aspect. That, you know, you just got to be getting back to somewhat of a normal. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I heard this one report that Dr. Oz that was on TV, and, and, and this, he reported this uh, about three or four weeks ago. He said there's an estimate now that 50% of all the people in the United States have this virus and that they're just not symptomatic of it. And that 40% of those will have some symptoms, and that 10% of that group. Uh, will actually go into the hospital, then 4% of those people will be on the respirator or the uh, uh, ventilators. So I think there's an awful lot of people that think like we do here that uh, you're, you're, it, it's just another case. I know it's a, it's, it's a really aggressive virus that attacks people, and it can be very serious and, and cause death, but I think it's just another case of a flu-type virus that goes around every year and I think there's a lot of people that think like us, and they're going to be going to the ball games, and they're going to be sitting in their eyebrows, and you're not, they're not going to be sitting six feet apart. It's it's just it's just kind of like in some without getting too political, in some aspects it's a lot of overkill on, on the panic on this one, and I can understand the panic, but um, 
I, I think there's a lot of people like us that would go to a, a ball game. Coach, 15 seconds. The state of, I mean, the uh, condition of Michigan State, the good, the bad, and the ugly, is it in Michigan State football? Are you saying good, bad, or ugly? For good, bad, or ugly? No, I'm asking you right now your opinion on the, oh. uh, where would you classify Michigan State football? I say good. I think it's going to be good. I agree. I think there's enough talent there to be, be good. And I think Mel Tucker's given Spartan Nation no reason to be anything other than optimistic. We'll be back. Other than optimistic.